uh, I every artist that I interview is because I respect and admire and I have an interest in. But why haven't the real so-called extreme music journalists approach you with this? This has been going. This has been a known fact for decades. Yeah, well, it's, it's like I said, it's the it's the same reason why, like you know like real leaders of this country don't step up either like during this time of crisis either it's yeah. just because nobody wants to be like it just seems like there's no moral courage and at the same time everybody wants to still ride the gravy train nobody wants to like you know nobody wants to rock the boat no and and at the same time um like i said it's just uh it's just one of those things that like um you know it's just it just ha- it, it, it's just a trip to be because like you have to understand people always like um when that song comes, you know, you hear it like at halftime on, on, on uh, you know, like on sporting events, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah. always there. And then there's always people that are going to ask, like, why? Or there's been people who actually thought that we actually got some kind of settlement, which is why they think we don't talk about it. It's just the thing is, is that it's just it's, it's a catch 22. If you talk about it, you're just going to be a bitch, you know, yeah, if, you're gonna, you know, you're going to label yeah, yourself you as know, bitter. And, and, and Excel was never like set up to be like a bitch. You know, it was like it was it was one of those things oh, that, good. you know, and so um and the thing is, like, my my girlfriend, who's Native American, she has, like, um, you know, kind of, like, um, you know, educated me on a lot of things. And, and the thing is, is that this is not the first. This has happened, like, like to, you know, people of color were, you know, and, and so for me. In a more serious yeah, realm. Absolutely. And, like, I mean, like, like, just the fact that, you know, people have been, like, you know, like, pillaged and robbed and stole from, you know, from. And so we're not, like, like any different you know in that yeah. sense it's, 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 it just happens and uh, um, the thing is is that um, what my girlfriend told me um, like um, natives you know um, you know they, they, they pride themselves on a calling out of like we're still here and so um, when we perform our music it's like it's it for me I feel like it's on a level of, of us stating that we're still here is that, is that why since I first saw you back in 1984 it seems like you excel the live show is like a exorcism ritual of sorts. Yeah, well, it's also, yeah, it's like, it's also... Ref- Do you exercise your demons when you're on stage? I, I don't know, but I just know that it's, um, that it, I, I feel like we're on a, like a mission, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes it, like, um, you know, like, like, for example, like, sometimes, uh, you know, it, it takes, there's little certain things that become, uh, like, motivators, you know? Sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes uh, there's certain bands that we play with that, there's a uh, sometimes like just like just a little but see there's like trigger points sometimes some some like some band will like just like you know do something like that that's kind of disrespectful you know or just not very cool and it triggers you know like something yeah. when we were younger too and then and we just know like like basically like what we need to do you know as far as uh let, letting the music like do the talking you know and you do that very masterfully no, thank you <laughs> thank you for thank you for answering that question honestly and sincerely uh one of, the, one of the things that I've always admired about you is the fact that, you know, whether you've had real psychotherapy or just you yourself got into a realm of being grounded is that is how you and also Sean have always been grounded individuals. Whereas you have, if you remember the 80s, there, there was nothing to be big headed about. If anything, you know, we were dodging cops and skinheads and all kinds of bullshit. Um, but as the years have progressed and how different generations have come up and then with the uh, infusion of the internet and, and then the recycling of some of these bands that are coming out to try to cash in, one of the things that I've always admired of Excel present day is the fact that you still, and let me say this very clearly, you still express a sincerity and a love for what you do. Yeah, well, that's just. Do you, do you? I mean, you just. We just talked about your injuries. And, yeah. You know, and, and all the underdog shit you've been fucked over. How do you keep that sanity and that happiness and that grounding? I just. Well, I just. Uh, you know, I don't. Actually, it's like that's. What, is that, it cannabis? Is it meditation? No. Um. Well, yeah. I mean, cannabis is always good, but the, and meditation is always good too. But I just think. Um. You know, I. Th- I. You know, that's, a, that's such a like a. I mean. It, I would like to have like a you know like a like a nice snappy answer for that because I can't really quite ever put a finger on it. I just think it's that um, I think we all we Sean and I especially because and, and Alex too because um, you know he's you know in, in part of the, he's also a contemporary as far as our age group is concerned. And so um, I just think that I just think that because like you know when we went to shows we we knew like um, you know like back then when we first started like it wasn't like 
you in order to get a a, a crowd uh, pit going like you know slam dancing or whatnot you had to earn it it wasn't like like yeah, given no, you know no, what I'm saying like today, right? and, and chaotic noise played like like a dozen show like a half a dozen shows before we ever got like a circle going and and that was like like I said and and when, once we you don't want it to stop you know what I mean like so basically it's like once you feel like it, like the, the fuse has been lit, you want to like maintain it. You know what I mean? So is it an ad- adrenaline rush that you've have you've been able to keep alive through all these decades? Um, you know, it's 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 like like I do a lot of road bike cycling. You know, uh, like Tour de France style like, uh, with the Spanics and whatnot. And I, I used to ride like like once a month. I do like a, I ride the Oxnard and back from Venice. So it was like 112 miles round trip. I started on a BMX bike. It took me 14 hours, and then I got on the road bike cycling, and then I it would take me like five hours. Um, but the thing is, is that um, when I'm when I'm cycling, like it's uh, there's like uh, there's like the fuel is like all kinds of things. There's like anger, there's happiness, there's sadness, there's just like stuff that's like on your mind. You know, it's it's a constant recycling of of fuel. And I think like when it comes um, when we perform our music. So basically, I think it's it's just a, it's like a personal formula for everybody too. Like Carlos, our drummer, um, who played who excellent drum. Oh, totally, man! Like um, another grounded into absolutely. And so um, and he's young. Yeah, absolutely, he's and, from this fucked up generation. <laughs> he totally is. But he's but and he and he sings for Blade. He's not a know it all. You know, they, he, all this generation, we know it all. He was the drummer of Fuel by Fire. He sings for Blade Killer. I mean, it's like oh, uh, yeah. And so. Um, and uh, but like I said, uh, we all have our own like um, personal motivation. But at the same time, we also know as collectively as a band, like what we're here to do as well. You know, yeah. Take and care so, of yeah. You've been playing, as we mentioned, uh, since 2014, going to different parts of the world, playing amazing shows here in the United States as well. New music. I know that we can't really talk about what's going on but you could tell me are you writing new music we're, now well we've always been writing new riffs and so let me hit you with this real quick go for it you have an amazing legacy for those of you that know you know what I'm talking about you have an amazing legacy your live show is still impeccable and real but it is 2019 mm-hmm. even though reminiscent the political times of 2019 and reminiscent to 84 with Reagan and all that mm-hmm. bullshit are you intimidated to write new music and the somehow the fear of it will stand up to the legacy? Do you understand what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I totally do. And the answer is uh, uh, no and maybe. But the, the no is that, um, like, uh, Sean and Alex have, like, real, like, career jobs, you know, and so to, like, focus, like, the amount of time. Because when we were younger, you know, we had, like, all day and all yeah, night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so... Um, but so you have to kind of make time, you know, it's almost like, a, you know, like when uh, like uh, middle aged parents, when they make time <laughs> to fucking be intimate, you know, they have yeah. that set schedule and stuff. And so I feel like, um, <laughs> that's good, that's good you know, time. like when they have kids, I, I don't have any kids, but I, I heard people like you like set schedules and stuff, you know, uh, Wednesday, yeah, mommy and daddy time or something, yeah, you know, you're blow me on Friday. <laughs> so, um. But but we've been talking because we know that the amount of time you got to like you can't you just got to really like like just like you know like just hunker down as they say and just like and just because certain things are going to work and some are not going to work. So we've been like uh, Sean's a, quite the riff master and Alex is as as well. And so we've already been structuring songs. I just hadn't put any vocals to it yet because I'm I'm kind of just like I wait till the very end because I let the song like dictate like how it's going to be sung. Right. And so. Um, but we, uh, but we do plan on doing a release, um, not only, of course, new songs, but uh, songs like Blitz in Confinement, Gods of Power from the 1986 uh, Refuse to Quit demo. Oh, wow. Yeah, and then songs like, um, like maybe possibly the songs from Welcome to Venice, um, Enforcer Conclusions and Make Up Your Mind. Yeah. Um, like record it like to, ma- you know, that's continuity with the, uh, today's recording, you know. Um, and then Sonic Decapitation, which was the Metallica yeah. fan club that I turned into a song because I was such a big Metallica fan. Like, so, you know, I wonder, I always wonder if, like, my Metallica, like, my fanaticism, like, like was like, a, like, it was what got me, like, in that situation. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the thing is, is that, um, is that we have, like, a, a bunch of songs, like No Deal and uh, Sonic Decapitation and, like I said, Gods of Power, Blitz Confinement. Um, that were never properly recorded, and they had like the full structure of like the songs that were that made it to the records as well. But you know, that's funny you say that because if you talk to your mature audience or your original audience, 
We loved the demos. As a matter of fact, when the record first came out, Split Image, and then after you released uh, uh, the jokes on you, we didn't like the overproduction. Yeah, of well, it. you know, we and, loved and the demo. I know, and that's and that's a, that's a tricky thing because like.